Thank you for staying with us up campaigns for the presidential poll. The governing All Progressives Congress held its mega rally, the grand finale, to a huge crowd of supporters in Lagos on Tuesday. Other political parties are expected to do the same between today and tomorrow, the 23rd, when the window for political campaigns for the presidential election will officially close. Out of about 18 candidates vying for the top job, the contest has been streamlined by political analysts to be between four candidates. They are the candidates of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party, Pito B of the Labour Party, and Rabi Kwankwaso of the New Nigeria People's Party. Of these four candidates will emerge, one of these four candidates will emerge the next president of Nigeria. Well, joining us via Zoom is columnist and public affairs analyst, Mohamed Adamu. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Right. Uh, there are those who have said that uh, the 2023 elections is quite different from other elections Nigerians have witnessed. And we have seen developments leading up to the elections. From your point of view, what makes this election so significant and different from what we've witnessed in the past years? Um, of course, it is definitely different. And um, no less than the unnecessary situation that has come to play, uh, particularly the issue of um, <coughs> a more like uh, this Naira redesign issue that has virtually thrown the entire polity into confusion. Uh, if for nothing, just this well, advertent or inadvertent situation that uh, the country has been plunged into, it has given it a distinct uh, nature. We are in troubling times, times that try many souls, as uh, a philosopher would say. So particularly, it is different to the extent that uh, uh, this is the first time we are having an electioneering period in which the whole country has been plunged into um, a situation of abject poverty. An attempt is being made to interfere with the election even before the election day. And so there is so much talk about an uh, effort by the government to curb or to forestall rigging. But what we see, unfortunately, is that those who are claiming to initiate policies that will ensure a free and fair election, ironically, by the policies they have initiated, they are the ones that are attempting to read. You heard of the word gerrymandering. Gerrymandering is uh, an American term that has been made into the political dictionary. Uh, it's a law of Massachusetts in 1811. Elbridge Gary, who attempted to redraw uh, electoral districts in, in, in Massachusetts in a manner that will confer advantage to him electorally. And that was the origin of the word gerrymandering, an attempt by policy to rig an election without necessarily uh, having any contact with voters. This is technically what is happening in Nigeria. Those who are claiming to want to give us a free and fair election are more like interfe interfering with the election in a manner that favors 
and disfavors others. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, the entire thing is virtually backfiring. Backfiring in the sense that now you have put the entire populace in abject poverty. You are making them more vulnerable, far more vulnerable than they would have been if this policy had not been put in place. But right now, I, I have a feeling that it is easier to influence a voter with as little as 300 naira. People are so poor. I was at the bank yesterday in, in Mina, and a security guard in the bank who ran an errand for me to buy a credit, I gave him 200 naira. 200. The kind of gratitude I saw, it was so much gratitude for so little an offer. And when I came out of the bank, just by my car before I took off, a little beggar, an almajiri, so to speak, came around. And I remembered I had a, a certain 50 naira in the pigeonhole that had been lying there for only God knows how long, very uh, uh, faded and almost out of recognition. I took this 50 naira and gave this young boy, and he, the way he suddenly went into supplications and prayers for me, I, it was evident that that 50 naira, faded as it was, was probably something he had not had in, in the last two days with him that because no one had anything to give any give someone else 50 naira. And when I listened to Oji Uzokalu talking about how it is now becoming difficult in his own house for his wife to cook the regular meals that she does for the house helps and probably some family members. All Jews of Cali we are talking about. Now you begin to imagine the situation that we are in. By the time you give a voter 200 Naira, it is easier to influence him. So you pay more like you pay less. You would be paying less now to influence a voter. Yes. There is a very good point you made there about uh, the irony or the paradox of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, thing that you think that uh, you think that you are disenfranchising the uh, the politician, but actually you are actually enfranchising him more and more and more by taking from him. You are giving him more powers. And uh, now uh, uh, exactly. let's focus on uh, the politics uh, of the north. People have been using the, the, the this uh, tension going on. There's people say there is what they call naka, say naka, and then there is this uh, also this trend going on now that it's payback time uh, for Ashura Jubola Metinubu. What feelings are you getting up north? Yeah, um, <clears throat> up north. Um, I think the feelings are good uh, based. Politicians going on, a lot of um, propaganda, and uh, well, for journalists who have more like a third eye, we are lucky we can see beyond the noise. But on the whole, I I don't think I have any worry that uh, things are coasting very well. Um, the forces, the forces that are trying to misinform the public, uh, they are there, quite okay. But we are reminding them, you probably saw the piece I wrote, uh, we are reminding them of that, uh, the fidelity of um, keeping promises, uh, trust, and confidences. There is 
nothing I think the North can do in, in so short a time to reward someone like uh, Bola Ahmed Tunibu for what he has done. Uh, he has distinguished himself as more like the most politically savvy uh, uh, personality in this country, about the only politician who does not jump ship, who has been consistent. He has remained within his party all this while. He has been the only one who genuinely builds bridges. He has extended a hand across geopolitics, across tribe and tongue. He has created alliances of ethnic groups and geopolitical entities. Honestly speaking, when I wrote the it was anguish in me, it was pain that a beautiful relationship that has built and we thought is still building between the North and particularly the Southwest that to my mind is the most politically savvy uh, section of the South. And through that relationship, probably a lot more will be consolidated in the future. And all of a sudden, we have forces <clears throat> in the North. Unfortunately, well, partisan forces, I should say, that are pushing for a repudiation of this handshake in a manner, in a manner that I honestly do not think it will augur well for the future of this country. When trusts are broken, when, when uh, parties are allowed brazenly to, to, to break promises, to repudiate uh, promises they have made, uh, the eventual, uh, of course, the consequences is that uh, the friendship will, will be shattered. And uh, what results from the breakdown of friendship between the Southwest and the North is, is some is better imagined. I, I, we love this country. All right. And we want. Hello? Yeah, all right, all right Mohammed, because of time, let, let me chip this in as you, as you talk about all of these things. Now, a lot of people will describe Nigeria as a very complex country with the complex people and uh, reasoning and different backgrounds and so on. Uh, as, as it is, one would say the kind of president that Nigeria needs right now <laughs> would not be a common person who just uh, has maybe a, the handsome face that everybody would like to see or something. But describe for us, what, what kind of president does Nigeria need, need right now, co considering the complexity and the level to which Nigerians want a change so drastically? Yes. Um, well, Nigeria, <laughs> it is obvious that... Uh, hello? Are you hearing me? Yes, yes we, can we can hear, hear you. you. Go, go ahead, we can hear you clearly. Yes, yes. There is, there is no doubt. There is no doubt about it that... Uh, uh, Tinubu has maintained a kind of character, character that understands him as a politician who, who builds people, someone who does not rely on his own intellect alone, someone who recruits persons with potentials he surrounds himself with those who can deliver. He has consistently maintained this character all through his eight years as governor of Lagos State. There is no doubt about it. No, well, no Nigerian who is sincere will doubt that Tinubu, of all the lot, Tinubu is the only candidate who has that capacity to wield divergent conflicting interests into one common hope and who has the knowledge 
to, to, to direct it towards the common good. So I, I, I think uh, it is asking the obvious to say who stands out better or who does Nigeria need. And thus far, uh, we would not be selfish if we say that Tinipu has demonstrated that uh, uh, ability to galvanize conflicting interests and to, to be able to, to, to reach out to friends and enemies and make peace. And he has been the most tolerant, uh, who, of course, has been the object of all propaganda and uh, machinations, mischief. But he has kept an equanimity of mind so far. Uh, it is amazing thus far that uh, he has not lost his bearing and he has been content. He has been taking all the shots. But like, uh, like a behemoth, he is trudging. And I think I, I, I am confident that uh, right. the majority of Nigerians would want this kind of leader. Right. Uh, there are baggages. Uh, we see, uh, well, I don't want to name names. All right. But I think, uh, I, hello? Yes. All right. I was going to ask that... Um, you're the person you're talking about the APC presidential candidate now uh, for yes. yesterday was a climax of the campaigns that I was held in Lagos the Teslim uh, Balogun Stadium and f from September 2022 till yesterday would you say that he has been able to sell the message of his renewed hope uh, yeah um, I think he has I think he has and um, all thanks to, to the campaign council and to all the trusted um, uh, aides and um, allies that he has surrounded himself with, there is virtually nothing that uh, Nigerians need to know about Tinibu, about his track record. Uh, I was telling a friend, I said, well, uh, what there is in Tinibu essentially first and foremost is um there's a track record of achievement and then you have also experience these two you can forgo virtually every other attribute in a candidate when you get <laughs> the road as they say you can forgo others if you do not have them so he has he has also lined up uh personalities that have so far I am very pleased with the deliveries all over all the campaigns the uh, communicating with the with the voter letting him know who Tinibu was who Tinibu means to him today and someone who has demonstrated governance in an unusual manner compared to virtually all the governors that we have ever had in this country. Tinubu stands out. T Lagos State is more like the exhibit. It is the it is what has been showcased. His policies on revenue generation, his policies on uh, 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 so many things that virtually every Nigerian is aware of. So I, I when he was being accused of going to Kano and only dancing, I said, well, what is there that Nigerians do not know about Tinubu so far? Virtually, no Nigerian who is sincere will tell you that he does not know the track record of Tinubu's achievement. All right. He does not know. Yes, yes. So I think uh, the, the communication has been effectively executed. Nigerians are aware they know. Okay. Unless you are not sincere, you know what he has done, you know what he's capable of doing. I told someone uh, on a very rather ridiculous note, I said if, if Tinibu were lying on a stretcher, but he can... Just to leave the conversation, a columnist and public affairs analyst, Mohamed Adamu, thank you for your time on the program.
And this is where we'll draw the curtains on the program for today. But let's let you know that the views and reactions of all our guests are theirs and have no connection with TVC News. Thank you so much for being a part of the show.